Welcome to Module 5, Lesson 32, Subtractive Fraction from a Mixed Number. Now remember, a mixed number, like number uh, 1 and 3 fourths right here, where you have a whole mixed with a fraction. And sometimes subtracting this is very, very easy. Like here I have 1, which you could consider, you know, 1 whole, and I have 3 fourths, so that's almost 2. And all I am doing is I am losing minus a fourth. So imagine that this fourth is gone. And now look at the blue amount that I have. Well, I still have that whole. And I only have a half or two fourths left. So that subtraction is easy. What changes in the second one here? Can you tell something that makes this a little bit more difficult? See, I still have the one and three fourths. But this time I am losing six fourths. This is a problem because three fourths minus six fourths would cause me to go into negatives. However, this subtraction must work because isn't one and three fourths larger than six fourths? So in a situation like this, it's better to see it, to draw out the circles or to draw a number line or do the arrow way. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and draw a number line. The largest number I need is 2 because I start with 1 and 3 fourths. So I'm going to cut this into fourths. I'm going to put a point where I have. I have 1 and 3 fourths, and I'm losing 6 fourths. So I'm going to go down 6 fourths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, where did I land? I landed at 1 fourth. So if I had 1 and 3 fourths and I lost 6 fourths, I would have 1 fourth left. Now, in your work today, it's going to ask you to use a number line or the arrow way. So on the first two here, A and C, that I'm going to show examples, I think it would be best to see a number line. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and draw those out. Now for both of these, it works to do 5, 6, and 7 on, on the part I want to focus on because I'm starting at 6 and 3 fourths, which is a little bit more than 6, and then I'm losing some. And I'm at 7 and a fourth right over here, and I'm losing a little bit as well. So this is plenty of room. So for the first one, I am working in fifths. So I'm going to cut my sections into fifths. And on the second one, whoops, didn't want to do that. On the second one, I'm cutting them into fourths. So fourths. All right. Now I'm going to work this out the same way. I'm going to label where I start. On the left is the number I have. I'm starting with six and three fifths. So find six and three fifths. One, two, three. And I'm losing one fifth, so I'm going to go back one. Now, what spot am I at right now? This one's pretty simple, right? I am at six and two fifths. And you can see that, that I'm at six and one two fifths. All right, and the next one, starting at seven and one fourth. And this time, I am losing three fourths, minus three fourths. So we'll trace that out. One, two, three. Now where is the spot that I am at? I am at six and one, two fourths. Six and two fourths. You could also call this six and a half. Okay? Now, you could keep drawing the number line on all of these, or as it continues in the next, it gives you kind of the same um, directions a little bit, but it says you could use the number line or area model. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and remind you, oh, sorry, I said area model, number line or arrow. I'll, I'll show you a little bit of the arrow way. See, they decomposed each fraction first, which helps with the arrow way, because it sets apart the amounts that would help create a whole. Okay? So what I mean by that is, on C here, you have 4 and a sixth. I would want to take away this one six, so I just have 4 by itself. And on this one, D, I would want to take away this 3 6, so I just have a 3, and I would want to take away 1 3rd, so I just have a 2. That's all they did for decomposing. Okay? So for the first one, they wanted to take away 
two fifths. So they made four fifths into into two fifths. Oops, sorry, into two fifths and two fifths. Now they did that so that you could see that if you just had a two and you lost two fifths out of it, or the two and two fifths, and you lost two. Ugh, let me start over. You have two and two fifths right here. So that's what you start with. So I'm going to add that in there, squeezing it in in red so you can see two and two fifths. Now you're losing four fifths, but it's easier to do it in a couple parts. So first, let's take away two fifths. Two and two fifths, take away two fifths. That leaves you with your nice whole two. But if you lose two more fifths, you're going below two, which brings you to one, right? And if you took two fifths away, how many more remaining fifths would be left out of that hole? Three more fifths would be remaining. So your answer is one and three fifths. All right, now let's see if I can do a better job explaining it on B. All right, I want to lose this one third. So I'm going to decompose this two thirds into a third and a third. So I could look at it like this. Instead of two thirds, it's a third and a third. I'm going to lose both of them. So I could start with my two and a third. I'm going to lose a third, and I'm going to end up with two. Now I have to lose another one third, which puts me below two. So I'm at one, and out of a hole, I lost one third. How many more do I have here? Two thirds. Okay. Let's try it. Let's practice it more. <clears throat> okay, the next one I want to lose a sixth. So I'm going to decompose four sixths into a sixth and three more sixths. Got to still have four sixths total. So I just changed four sixths. Now I could look at it as four and a sixth. I lost a sixth. Now I have four. And now I'm going to lose three more sixths. And if I lose three more sixths, I'm going below four down to three, and there's three sixths left over out of that hole that I lost. Okay? I'm going to leave D for you to do on your own, and then I'm going to show you more examples at the end of the end of your worksheet. Now here they're not really using the area model. They want you just to decompose the total to subtract the fractions. Now this last technique is pretty cool. They've done A as an example for you, so I'll let you kind of study that on your own. And I'll start you off with B or C. So it has seven and an eighth, and you're losing some eighths, right? So seven and an eighth. That could be looked at as six and an eighth. What did I do? I pulled out a one. So it could be six and an eighth and a one. Now the one and the three eighths have a difference of 5 eighths. Okay, you follow me? If you have a hole, a 1, and you lose 3 eighths, then you'll have 5 eighths. So another way to look at this problem is really just the 6 and an eighth and the 5 eighths difference between the two, which is a total of 6 and 6 eighths. Now are you saying, huh, what? What did you just do? Let's try it again. B, 5 and 2 fifths. That could be thought of as 4 and 2 fifths and a 1, right? I took out 1. Now, the 1, I'm saving it. I moved it out so I could take, it, take the 3 fifths from it. So the whole minus 3 fifths leaves you with 2 fifths, right? So this problem could be thought of as four and two fifths and two more fifths, which is a total of four and four fifths. Okay, well, let's try one last one, D. Three and three ninths could be thought of as a two and three ninths and also another hole. Now that hole, I pulled it out so I could use it 
to subtract the 4 ninths. So a whole minus 4 ninths is 5 ninths. So our problem can be looked at as, really, the 2 and 3 ninths and 5 more ninths, which is a total of, put it over, under here, under the answer, 2 and 8 ninths. All right? Now this is just a strategy because it's easier to, to subtract one from something instead of doing four and an eighth, take away three eighths. You could just pull these two apart so you could have a whole separated. And if you do the whole take away three eighths, you get five eighths. So now you can just rewrite your problem as an addition problem. Three and an eighth and the five eighths difference makes a total of three and six eighths. All right, so this is a pretty cool me method. I want you to practice it as well and just continue learning and practicing ways to subtract fractions. If you need more help, see me, and I'll be glad to. Thanks.